Hi, yogis, my friends. Welcome to our practice. I have two guests with me today that are a little camera shy. Friends of mine from California taking a cross country trip in their, their rig, and they're here for about a week with me, so they're joining in practice today. We've all found our spots, our familiar grounding, this mat of ours that keeps calling us back. Hearing the sounds of the bells, smelling the incense, hearing the music, it's a calling back to our practice. Yogis, it's a time for us to let everything else go, at least for this period of time of practice, just to let everything else wash away. It's amazing when we come back, it's a different perspective and often not quite so debilitating. Close your eyes, find your sit bones. If you're sitting in half lotus or virasana, you're grounding. Like seed pods opening, the tendrils from the roots emanating down into the earth, grounding us, tethering us, creating this stability. See if you might be able to feel the concurrent rise through the crown of the head, All right? That slinky of our spine, not quite so compressed, but feeling the space as the, the springs start to come apart. Notice the weight of your legs releasing to the earth and the softening of the muscles in your hips, maybe the slightly tilted forward pelvis, that anterior tilt, the position we look for in seated and standing postures to set the stage for the rest of the spine. We find the dance of our curves when our pelvis is grounded. Notice the arch in your low back, the natural curve. Maybe the idea of binding in those low ribs, either use your hands or just your imagination and draw those ribs closer in. We know we want to secure this segment, it's mobile, so that when we bring our heart tall, what's opening is the upper back and broadening across the chest. Try not to flare or pop the ribs out. Notice how your head maybe here has become more bobble headed, not quite so pulled forward. It's found its balance point. Take your hands back behind you, open up your wings. Feel your fingertips reach towards the bottom of the mat. Way back they go. Go ahead and turn the hands now so the thumbs will spin towards the earth, the palms towards the sky. Maybe some cracks and snaps in your shoulders, maybe starting to awaken the nerves, feeling a little tingling into the arms. Release your elbows down to your hips, palms are up, receptivity are down for more grounding. Take a moment here, your internal architectural scan, what's being fed back to your brain today from the periphery, maybe a little discomfort somewhere, maybe feeling just fine, feeling grounded and, and held. How about in your brain, what's going on in your brain this morning? Lots of activity, I'll bet. Lots of that chitta vrita, that monkey mind just spinning, all the post-its all over the place. Let's see if we can clear that out and we know how to do it with our breath. I'll ask you to inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth, through your pursed lips. Inhaling through the nose, warms, hydrates, purifies the air, the prana, the life force as we invite it in, in its purest form. And as you breathe out through your pursed lips, you can hear and feel all the debris, all the junk we don't want in our system. The physiological debris, the mental debris. This is your clearing house, yogis. You know, we're practicing all around the world. We're apart, but we are still together holding our sangha, our group, our containment of all this practice for years and years. Let's sit for a minute, find your breath and see if we might be able to unite our breath.
Before you open your eyes, take your thumbs, cross them like bird wings. Place them lightly over the center of the chest on the sternum. It's our heart center, our compassion center. It's calming, soothing, creates a sense of tranquility. Feel your heartbeat inside your chest. Feel the warmth in your hands on the outside. And stop for a moment here to feel your humanness. Blink your eyes open, look at the front of your mat, and bring the gaze back up again. And as if you can't help it, your hands rise, helium hands, and the ends of your fingertips and helium taking you up to the sky. So as your fingertips reach towards the roof, the ceiling, the roof, the sky, infinity, the sit bones go grounding deep down into the earth. Take a moment here to feel the expansiveness so much more than just our physical bodies, seeing if you can connect into whatever it is you're feeling and pull the low ribs in. Yeah, look up at your hands. And as you look up at your hands, back bend your upper back a bit. Get rid of some of that roundedness. Put your head back between your elbows, touch your hands together. Interlace the fingers, index fingers go to the sky, steeple hands. So now we have pinpoint laser sharp finger pointing right to the sky, finding the unbridling of the side bodies, the ribs. Maybe a little side bending, right? Side to side here, finding some length to your waistline. Softening of the muscles between the ribs or intercostal muscles. Beautiful. Bring it back to rest. Press your palms together, inhale, and on your exhale, lower down to remain central. Stopping at the third eye, the tip of your nose, your lips, your throat, and onto your big heart. Thumbs on the heart, the heart will rise. Pause here for just a moment. Inhale. And on your exhale, spin your hands to the earth. And let's open the neck. Start your right hand grounded. It's held and stable. Take the left ear and soften it into the left shoulder. Try to fight the idea of pulling with the ear to stretch the right side. It's the opposite. We know this yogi softening, letting the weight of your head and gravity do the work and start to feel the ratcheting down as the the neck starts to free. Inhale back up to start position and exhale, right ear, right shoulder. It's probably that left side upper trapezius way overused, soften it. Feel the side bend in your neck now too as the bones start to soften or side bend and the nerve starts to release. Inhale back up to center and on the exhale, left hand turn with the chin. We do our little wave rider here. Little bit of turbulence as the chin makes its way around, carving out the path. Stop at the point where you feel you're at the end of the ring. And then take it a little bit farther, maybe, trying to open up rotation in those seven vertebrae in your neck. Inhale back through center on the exhale around to the right. Do your gentle nodding. Riding the wave, take it around. When you feel you're at the end of your range, pause and take it a little bit farther. Inhale back through center and cruise around again to the left. The pass should be a little bit cleaner. Let's take our left hand under the right ear. Don't push it, but just give it a little bit of encouragement. Look what you can do. You can inspire a little bit more of that rotation. Release the left hand back down to the floor and then bring your chin out towards or to the right shoulder point. A beautiful stretch of right side of the neck, sternocleidomastoid and scaling muscles. Inhale it back up through center. Stay on your horizon line as you come around. Maybe noticing, oh my goodness, I can feel the movement. Take the right hand left ear. Give it a little bit of encouragement. Hmm. Release the hand back down. Inhale and on your exhale, take your chin out towards you to the right shoulder point. Inhale back through center. 
And on the exhale, release the chin down to jugular notch between the two collarbones. You find the flexion of those seven vertebrae, trying not to let the chest cave in on the neck. Trace the chin on the collarbones. Now inhale on your exhale, trace your chin along the line of your right collarbone. We know for safety, it stays on the bone. If it starts to come away from it, that's where you might stop. Otherwise, trace to the end, see if you can feel the end of the range. Inhale back through center, and on the exhale, sweep it around gently to the left. A little tune-up of your thyroid and parathyroid glands here in your, your throat. Take it around. Inhale back through center. On the exhale, reaffirm the sit bone press and fingertip press. Pull the low ribs in and bring your heart nice and tall. Big smiley face. Inhale, and on your exhale, lift the crown of your head to the sky. Touch the roof. Right. Push your heart forward now. So start the back bend from behind your heart and find that sweeping, arcing movement. Share the movement as you start to let the head release back nice and easy. Try to release back from a different spot than you normally do. Maybe find a spot where the neck joins that upper back. Provided there's no dizziness or pain in the spine here, let it go nice and easy and explore that stretch from your chin to your collarbones. Inhale your head back up and exhale. Nice, yogis, take your hands, L-shaped hands. We take our thumbs under the tops of the thighs. Many of you guys are very familiar with this now, our first forward bend. Press down onto the thighs first and then use your thumbs directed towards the groins and you'll internally spiral your hips. Can you feel when you do that, the body wants to start to release forward? So keep your chin tucked and very slowly start to release the body, the torso towards the ground. Your sit bones will start to come up. Take your elbows to your side and your palms are up. Let's root our hands, inhale. On the exhale, reach out with your hands out in front of you Thumbs or, or index fingers forward, thumbs towards each other. Imagine a marble under the index, roll it to the thumb. Press the fingertips into the earth. The palms will pucker. We find this stable hand position and roll the elbow creases now towards the sky. So the wrists stay where they are. The shoulders move into external rotation and see if you might be able to drop your elbows down to the earth or onto a prop, a bolster or a blanket. Press the hands and elbows into the earth and draw the crown of your head towards the top of your mat. Look what you are doing there. Creating space in that compressed spine from gravity and the seated postures we assume. Nice work, yogis. Walk your hands back up towards your knees. Come back to your tall sit position. If you're sitting in half lotus like I am, switch your legs to their uncommon cross the opposite side. Arms come up. Cactus arms, widespread fingers, elbows out to the side of the room. Go ahead and pull them back a little bit. So the elbows shouldn't be in front. They should be ideally right across from the shoulder or maybe even a little bit behind you. Open and close your hands. See if you can find that energy moving right through the hands. And surprise, open they go. Big wide hands. Bend your middle finger down. Touch the thenar eminence of your palm here. Your Thumb pad, it's a beautiful energy point right on that spot. So open your hands again and shoot your energy, the laser beam right out of those hands, find the energetics and turn the thumbs back now. Inhale and on your exhale, go ahead and let the thumbs drop backwards. Yep, so the thumbs will drop backwards. We find the external rotation in our shoulders. Inhale forward and drop them down. So fingers come down to the ground. And again, we're finding the internal rotation there in the shoulders. Bring them back up on the inhale and on the exhale, turn the thumbs back and drop them back. Inhale forward, bring them forward. Fly machine arms, touch palms and elbows. Turn the hands to face you. Inhale, on your exhale, push the sides of the hands and elbows together and rise up. Keep taking the elbows up past the chin, maybe the nose, the third eye. When the elbows start to come apart, pause there. And then everybody take your elbows apart. Index and middle will touch. Inhale and on your exhale, drop down slowly through that thick fluid. Reset the whole shoulder girdle complex. Let's buzz through that three times. 
Take it back up again, a nice press and around reminding you after you've been sitting at your desk or car for a while, do this. It'll so help to open up the tissues. Down they go, elbows into the side pockets. Grab your light bulbs and turn your light bulbs now, pronating, supinating our forearms into the queen wave and into the hallelujah arms up overhead. Back down through queen wave, light bulb hands, and go ahead and shake them out. All right, yogis, float them up. Pterodactyl arms, reach out. Bring your shoulders up to your ears. That's where we live, right? Drop that. So put some pins or some Botox shots into your upper traps and boop, drop them down. So the muscle from your neck to your shoulder doesn't work, that upper trap anymore. It's just the deltoids that fit over our shoulders. Hold that. Grab your imaginary tennis balls. Flap your wings. See if you can find the energy moving through. Let's touch down and fly him back up again. So really soft arms, right? Trying to get rid of some of the tension that we're holding. Let's turn these pterodactyls into eagles. One of my favorite sequences now, right on top, left on bottom. See if you can get the elbows to marry like that and maybe get the fingers of the left hand into the palm of the right. If that seems ridiculous, then just put the backs of the hands together or like we tell you, just have the arms touching like this. So don't get into a position that doesn't feel right. Try to have the triceps parallel to the floor and drop the blades down. Inhale. On the exhale, push the right elbow into the left elbow and we'll drag the shoulder blades forward. It's a joint there, a scapula moving on the rib cage. See if you can find that move, movement. Inhale it back to center and here's the yummy one. Pull back, retract the shoulder blades. Maybe you'll even get your thoracic spine to mobilize. Inhale back to center and on the exhale, just your arms, take them around to the right. So the gaze stays forward and we get a big stretch of the left shoulder, posterior deltoid and rotator cuff and mobilizing the right. Let's add the head to it. Now turn and look over the right shoulder and maybe you can see, wow, well, my neck rotation's a little better now. Inhale back to center with the elbows and the nose and on the exhale, just the elbows go around to the left. So obviously here, opposite side stretch, back of the right shoulder, mobilizing left. Inhale and on your exhale, look over the left shoulder, find that rotation. Inhale back to center and on the exhale, drop the elbows down. So don't look down yet, just take the elbows down, see if you can get your left elbow under the bottom of the rib cage. So the shoulder blades will ride up the back. And let's go ahead and round into it now, round out that upper spine and let the crown of the head release to the earth. Feel how broad the upper back is. Inhale back up again, take the elbows straight out, pull the low ribs in and on the exhale, take the elbows up. The shoulder blades will start to move down the back now. Elbows come up, we get rid of that roundedness of our upper back. Marry the breath with the movement here. Find the imaginary hand behind your heart Push your heart towards the sky. The elbows will come up and maybe you'll add some neck extension. Let the head release back. Oh my goodness. Inhale it back to center. And on the exhale, release those eagle arms down and take them up opposite, left on top, right on bottom. Customize your arm position here. Let's do the same with opposite crossed arms. Inhale. Exhale, take left hand to right hand, draw them forward. Mm, feel those blades moving on the cage. Inhale it back to center and on the exhale, pinch the blades back together and mobilize that thoracic spine. Inhale back to center, exhale, take it right. Just the elbows. Feel the stretch of the muscles, mobilizing the joint. And then turn your gaze, look over right shoulder again, even more free. Inhale back to center. Exhale left with the elbows, keep the nose forward to start with. Turn the gaze, look over the left shoulder now. All our parts warming up. Inhale back to center. Exhale, drop the elbows down, broaden the upper back. Move the blades first and then move into the spine, round her out a little bit and bring the chin down towards the chest. 
Inhale back up and on the exhale, pull the low ribs in, guard that very flexible segment and take the elbows up. So if you're finding that you're going into a big old back bend from your low back, pull those low ribs in, contain it and have it from your upper back. Take the elbows up to the sky. Maybe let your head release back. Feel the warmth and the awareness now in that mid thoracic spine that's so ignored. Beautiful. Bring it back on the inhale and on the exhale. Release your hands down. L hands right onto the tops of the thighs. See if you can remember what we talked about or just fake it and bring yourself back down again towards the earth controlled. Spin the arms out when you're ready. Ground in. Release. Crown of the head, top of the mat, feel the fluids moving through us, right? Shaking it all up and creating a different viscosity for our tissues, much more slippy slidey. Nice, walk your hands back up, tall sit position. All right, let's open our knees and ankles after sitting like that. You guys okay back there? <laughs> Slide your blanket out of the way. Welcome to my world. Take your right foot back and push your heel all the way back. So see if you can feel what's happening in your toes there, right? The joint, the metatarsal joints where your toes meet your foot, the heel all the way back. Back of the knee pushes towards the sky and the crown of the head towards the top of the mat. Beautiful. Inhale the right leg forward and do the same with the left. Curl the toes under, send the heel to the back of the mat. Crown of the head to the front, the back of the knee towards the heavens. Feel that gastroc muscle as it crosses over the knee. Beautiful. Take lefty forward. We'll take righty back one more time. Same thing. Maybe you'll feel the same as I do here. It's much more free the second time around. And let's really work the foot now. Inhale. On the exhale, come on to the tips of the right toes, flip over onto the top of the foot, feel all that mobilization through the toes, the phalanges, and into the tarsal bones of your foot and up into your ankle. Nice, yogis, flip through it again and push your heel back. Draw the right one forward, do the same with the left. Curl the toes under, heel back, crown forward. Inhale, body weight forward, tips of the left toes, flip over onto the top, feel the articulation through all the bones of your feet. Inhale, and on the exhale, push it back again, all the way back. Broken toe, draw the knees together, curl your toes under, the inside ankle bone and toe knuckles touch. This is a lot for people who are Stiffen the toes and have the restriction in their calves. So if you push back, and this is painful in the big toe joints, especially if you've got bunions, back off. Otherwise, see if you can push back and allow the opening to happen. And then start to walk your hands up and put your hands onto your thighs. So the idea here is to release the weight of the pelvis into the heels there. If it's too much, you can take a block underneath your knees or maybe a bolster underneath your buns and don't come down quite so tight onto it. Take the middle fingers down to the earth and the crown of the head up to the sky. Pause here for a moment, find your breath. Take your hands back behind you, interlace your fingers. Try to have the palmar surface of your hands touching as you spin your shoulders back your thumbs will touch the arches, the medial arches of your feet, the inside arch. Inhale and on your exhale, take your elbows straight back behind you. So the shoulders and elbows move into extension. We keep our low ribs in again and see if you can open your heart and look up towards the sky as the fists release towards the ground. Beautiful, inhale back to center. Exhale, take your arms up. Right hand presses to left, elbow squeeze ears, low ribs in, back bend the upper back. Switch the press of the palms, elbow squeeze ears, ribs in, back bend. Feel the release of the glutes and sit into it for a moment. Release the hands back down to your side. Take your hands forward and go ahead and kick out the feet for a moment for Bring in some life back in, 
can uh, stick your knees back a bit or underneath your hips and your hands forward of your shoulders. Lots of times people's wrists get too uh, extended in this position. So take them out a little bit and let's see if we can start to open our spines now. Pull your toes under, inhale, and on the exhale, push back. Yeah, just a little bit. Spread the sit bones, feel that opening in your low back, starting to feel your side body open a bit. And we'll work our way back in maybe four or five passes. Inhale forward, release the feet to the earth. And the first time here, just push your pelvis forward. So the front of the pelvis opens. We try not to round our upper back. Hands are pressed into the earth and we find the stability in our shoulders. So we're not hanging on the shoulders. Okay, yogis, inhale, curl your toes under and push back a little bit more this time. So deepen the hip creases and the knee creases. Start to feel how this is down dog arms now, right? We start to open up a little bit more. You can maybe even start to release the ears to the shoulders. Inhale back up again. And this time, find the press of the hands and open up a bit more. Maybe you can push your chest through the shoulders. You can release the pelvis closer to the earth. If it's pinchy in your low back, slide a block underneath your pubic bone. Inhale, curl the toes under. Exhale, push back. Now a bit farther. Go through your down dog arms. And then maybe your sphinx arms. They'll release to the earth, the elbows. And then maybe your forehead releases down. Beautiful. Pause there. Inhale back up. So you're kind of scared cat. Round it all out. Release the feet, find the stability in your shoulders, and let the heart move through again. Maybe a little less pinchy, second round. Inhale. Exhale, look over your right shoulder, see if you can see your heel back behind you. Inhale back through center, and on the exhale, look over your left shoulder. Inhale back through center, look up. Inhale back through center, bend your elbows, yogis, and see if you can put your pelvis on the ground. Now, your belly button, but your pelvis, keep your elbows in close to your body line. Maybe you'll feel the abdominal wall stretch as well. Inhale back up through the scared cat. Curl the toes under. This time, the knees go wide, the big toes touch, and we move our way back into wide child. Do your down dog arms, do your sphinx arms, and settle the forehead down to the earth, or maybe I'll do a prop. If the hips are real pinchy here, you're going to want to back off. Otherwise, shift your pelvis to the right and the left. It's an amazing way to lubricate the whole hip socket here. Good. Bring the pelvis back to neutral. Inhale up through scared cat. The feet will come apart again. And see if you can unfurl the spine now. Yeah, much more lubricated. And the elbows, put your pelvis down on the earth. Elbows stay in nice and tight. Inhale back up, scared cat. Wide child, big toes touch, knees go wide. And maybe you can feel the fluidity with which we're coming into pose now. Forehead releases to the earth and shift your pelvis right and shift your pelvis left. Good. Bring it back to neutral and turn your palms up now for the hopeful pose. Let's hang out here for a moment. Lots of things to hope for these days. Hope for something spectacular to drop into your hands, into your lives. See if we can bring some peace and order back to the craziness. Pause for a moment here. Feel your heartbeat. Your breath. Grateful for our practice. Turn the palms back down towards the earth. Slide them back underneath the shoulders. Go ahead and press yourself up. Let's back into pigeon. I've had a bunch of requests for this one. Come on to your fingertips. Maybe even some blocks if you need them underneath you. We'll take the right leg and do what we just did a moment ago. Slide it back. Push it all the way back. All right all the way back with your foot. Pause for a moment there. Inhale now, draw the right leg forward. You're on the top of your foot. And on the exhale, touch your right knee to your right elbow. 
into your right armpit like a ballerina foot here, right? And then see if you might be able to circle the right leg around the left. If that doesn't seem like it's working, when we get to the next round, you can simply just cross your left leg over and you'll be in the same position. Let's try it again. Why do this? Well, trying to lubricate the hip and trying to get the muscles strong to create the motion, push back. Inhale, draw that right foot forward. It's on the top of the foot. And then exhale, it goes into the elbow and the armpit and circle it around. And I would marry the knees together here. Those of you who are very open in your hips, you're certainly welcome to practice with the right leg forward, the shin parallel to the front of the mat or somewhere halfway between. You might come down onto your palms now as we walk our way back into the pigeon. Take your left foot back and then your hands back, your foot and your hands. So we're gonna end up in king pigeon at the top of the pose. Take a moment or two or three here and walk your way back. Remember, no pinches in the low back. If you're a little rounded in your thoracic spine, you might just stay here. Don't load into the low back. Once you get back as far as you think you can go, bounce it out a little bit and feel the buoyancy here and try not to hold. Bring it back to neutral, toes left foot curl under and you'll be able to pull yourself back, yep, a little bit farther. All right, yogis. The top of the left foot's gonna press into the earth now, that's our anchor. Inhale, and on your exhale, draw the crown of the head towards the top of the mat. So we're not trying to cave in like fetal position down to the mat, but we're trying to lengthen out. So take that slow mo and then take your elbows out in front of you for sphinx arms again. So sphinx arms in pigeon pose. Press hands and elbows into the earth and let's hang out here. Look what you can do to lengthen your spine. Remember that mid back is always a bit rounded. It lives in a kyphosis of roundedness. It's just too rounded. All right, take your right hand now and put it into your hip crease. So your thumb is on the top of your right thigh bone. Press down onto the thigh bone and then roll your thumb towards your groin. And does that feel like you wanna come deeper into your pose? Basically, we're resetting the hip socket or the ball in the socket to promote this forward bend. Slide your hand or right hand out again, and maybe you come to rest with your forehead on your forearms. If this is too much, you can just stay up, maybe have your chin in your palm, figure out where you need to be. And maybe even when you're down and you're deepest pigeon, you can take your arms out in front of you and reach them out. Hang out here for a moment. Envision that right hip not dropping off to the side, but internally rotating and leveling off your pelvis. Slide your hands underneath your shoulders, yogis, inhale and on your exhale, push up. Yeah, look at this, unfurling the whole spine finding some length. Take the left foot and crawl it back a little bit more. Yeah, feel the stretch. Maybe again, that abdominal wall, certainly your hip flexors on the left and this deep piriformis and hip rotators. We'll switch to the other side. We'll transition through plank pose. Curl your toes under left foot. Press your hands into the earth. Find the stability in your shoulders. Call in your core as you Straighten the right leg back behind you. Push your heels to the back, crown to the front, top of the push-up here. If somebody came and sat on you right now, you wouldn't compress in. See if you can find the stability. Draw your, draw your heels back to the back of your mat. Look at how that feels, just a big old opening. All right, Yogi's put your knees down and let's do the other side. Come onto your fingertips. Right knee to the center of the mat a little bit. Stretch the left leg back behind you. Push it all the way back. Inhale it forward, top of the foot. Exhale, touches the left elbow, left armpit. Circle the foot around. See if you can find that crossed position. Let's come out of it again. 
Inhale, armpit, elbow. Exhale, push it back. Inhale it forward, elbow, armpit, exhale, take it around, find your comfortable opening. Maybe you'll release down under your palms, maybe stay in your fingertips, maybe use some blocks. Let's crawl back to king pigeon, top of pigeon. Right foot crawls back, hands come back, foot comes back, hands come back, you get the idea. Slowly work your way back into your deepest part of the pose. Go ahead and bounce it out again. Find the buoyancy here so you're not holding. Bring it back to rest. I guarantee you walk those toes back another notch. Look how you can open up, right? Beautiful. Inhale. On your exhale, don't think about feeling to the earth, but slowly start to draw the body weight forward, the crown of the head, and then slide your elbows forward underneath the shoulders for your sphinx arms. Play around with your breath and move in here for a moment on every exhale. Mm, crown of the head comes a little higher up towards the top of the mat. Take your left hand now, top of the hip crease, so the left thumb goes onto the femur. Give it a push down and then move your thumb towards the groin. See how that levels the pelvis, right? In the sense that I really wanna come forward now. Maybe you'll stay up on your sphinx arms, maybe you can use your thinker pose, or maybe get your forehead down on your forearms. Go into a little bit of peace and quiet here. Inhaling and on your exhale, soften whatever you might be holding. Maybe you'll take your arms out in front of you, maybe that works for you, it feels really good to take the arms out, maybe that's destabilizing. See what comes up. Slide the hands underneath the shoulders. Inhale on your exhale. Open up. Mm. All that beautiful grace and ease in our spines. Then let's drop off onto the left hip. And roll over. Let's lower down. Or actually, let's do bridge here for boat here first. Feet on the ground, hands behind your knee in your popliteal space. Pull the low belly in and pull that imaginary egg up for your pelvic floor and lean back like you're in a lounge chair on a cruise line or something. Use your belly here. Your belly is helping to hold. If your belly wasn't holding, you'd drop forward. If you're feeling it in your hips, you're overusing your hip flexors. Try not to do that. All right. Take your heels onto the ground now, a little more destabilizing and lean back so you can keep the heart wide open. Take your right foot up and take your left foot up. Look at your toes and spread them. See if you can find some space between the toes. Maybe hang out here. Keep yourself breathing, right? Keep the heart nice and wide and open. Maybe take the hands off the backs of the legs. And if your hamstrings can tolerate it, straighten out your legs. To make it a little bit more challenging, start to lean back a little bit and your belly, your core really has to pull in. If you got some sore abdominals tomorrow, you'll know why. Take your hands behind your knees, put your feet back down, and bring it in for a moment. We'll go right back into the same thing. Inhale, exhale, start to lean back. Feel your belly, pull right in. Shoulder blades, release down. We find the big open heart under your heels. Feet come up, maybe. Spread the toes. Hands come out, legs straighten, maybe lean back a bit. Maybe add some arm movement to it. Arms come up and down, we're breathing. We're finding this beautiful flow. Take your hands back, feet on the ground. Waiting for dinner, we'll lower ourselves down to the earth, count of 15, hands are out. Inhale, on the exhale, ratchet back slowly. You count to 15. When you get to about seven, that's the turning point. Try not just to drop over the ledge, but keep the core and pelvic floor engaged and see if you can very slowly lower down to the earth and draw the knees to the chest. 
If provided you don't have an active back problem now, low back, let the low back roll off the ground and flex. Deepen your hip creases. Inhale, hmm, on your exhale, put your sacrum back down. That's the bone between your two pelvic bones. As you put your sacrum down, can you feel how your low back arches off the ground? That's the natural curve. Let's try to preserve that. One hand on each knee, circle the knees out to in. So we're starting to increase the movement in our hip joints here. And let that sacrum press to the earth. We're not just rolling everything all over the place, but we're moving the ball in the socket. Do the opposite direction now, yogis, from in to out. See if you can feel that. Best back decompression I know, or one of the best ones. Let's get into it. Take your hands, they're on your patellar tendon, so not right on the kneecaps, but slightly below. Head is nice and easily resting on the ground, not pressing. Push your sacrums back down again. See how the back arches. Inhale. On the exhale, push your knees into your hands, but pull your hands down into your knees. You won't move. It's an isometric press, but what happens is your sacrum presses the earth and we release all the pressure in the low back. Release that. You'll see your back will flatten a bit towards the ground, maybe not completely flat. Inhale. And exhale, do the same thing. Push the knees up, but the hands are there to prevent it. And it helps to move all that energy into your low back. Beautiful. Go ahead and release that. Let's put our feet down for crazy legs. Knees together, feet apart. Arms come out in a T position. Inhale. On the exhale, let the right knee slide down the inside of the left shin. Remember, keep the knee in contact with the shin. So it's a controlled movement. The legs don't just flop open. Inhale, back up. Knee slides up left shin, and then let left go down inside of right. Yeah. Keep this moving. Let's get the legs to figure out what they're doing. Sliding knee down inside of opposite shin. Let's take the arms now, put the thumbs into the elbow creases, but take the arms up overhead. So you kind of frame your ears with your arms. It just changes the stretchability of that lat muscle in your side body and opens your rib cage. Keep your legs moving with your arms up over your head. And then we'll dissolve into the arms rotating. So bring the arms above your chin now. And as your legs go one way, your arms go the opposite way, winding and unwinding. Inhale back to center and exhale. Take them over to the opposite side. Move nice and slowly, lubricating our joints and feeding the discs. Let the head come into it now too. So inhale back to center and as the legs Move to the right, the head moves to the right, and the elbows move to the left. Inhale back to center, all the pieces, and head and knees one way, arms opposite way. Keep that going for a while. And when you feel you're ready, you can have the eyeballs to it with either eyes open or closed. The eyeballs will follow the elbows, while the head follows the knees. Eyeballs, elbows, head, knees. Get into the rhythm of that for a few more rounds. So productive, so amazing for our joints. Good, bring it all back to center. Let's build a little power in our bellies through some bridge, arms at your side, middle fingers touch heels for most of us. If your arms are short, don't force the heels. Turn the palms up now next to your body so we don't use the arms to start. You know the difference between your toes and your heels. Lift your toes off the ground and then put them back down again. Don't grip the ground with the toes. Inhale. Exhale. Push the soles of the feet into the earth. Notice how the whole core inspires. Pull the imaginary egg up and then tack your belly down. Then lift your hips off the ground. You can't lift fast when everything's engaged like that. 
squeeze an imaginary block between your knees and move your knees towards the bottom of your mat. Take your hands underneath your back, interlace your fingers, and then bring your shoulder blades under you, shimmy shoulders. If you can, the sides, the ulnar border, the pinky border of your forearm is on the ground. Your heart is wide open here. Pause. Pick your head up off the ground and then put it back down again. Don't press the earth with your head. Stay here or progression, inhale. Exhale, take the elbows to your side, fingers are towards the sky, squeeze the imaginary block between the hands and then push the elbows into the earth and look at your heart rise. Look down at your heart, it's rising up right towards your face. Straighten out your arms now, maybe touch the sky with your fingertips, inhale. Exhale, drape your arms back up overhead. See if you can touch the ground with the back of your hand or maybe your thumb. And go back through your checklist, feet press, eggs, belly, squeeze the block between the knees, knees towards the bottom of the mat, lay out the bridge. Inhale your arms back up, fingertips to the sky. Exhale, put the elbows down, release the palms down, and then slowly let the spine release towards the earth. When you get to the bottom of your rib cage, skip the low back, imprint the sacrum, feels so yummy, and take the soles of the feet together, let the knees out to the side for Bona Kanasana, and let your legs kind of pinwheel side to side. Rest for a moment with the legs open. Maybe you can take your hands to the inner groin there and find that chicken tendon right, kind of a tight tendon right up by the pubic bone. Soften that and maybe kind of squeeze the flesh of the adductor muscles inside down towards the knees and notice how the legs start to open up a bit more. Take your hands to the outsides of your legs, move your legs back together again. Since we've just bridged, let's go ahead and do our psoas release sequence. Take your block now, yogis, bridge up and slide the block in underneath your sacrum. So we know it's not on the butt cheeks and it's certainly not on the low back. Pause here for a moment. I've heard from some of you saying that you just feel so good in this position. So why is that? Your sacrum's on the block, but your low back is hanging off the back of the block in extension. So it helps to unload the spine. So maybe relish that position for a moment. Keep readjusting your blocks to be sure that they're in the most comfortable, advantageous place. Straighten out your right leg now, send it down to the bottom of the mat. Use it as a power leg to start with Tadasana. So feel the earth with your heel and slide your heel down to the bottom of the mat and then let it release and it will roll out to the right side. That's the lazy position for the hip. Do the same with the left now. So the right one stays out there. Lefty is gonna come down, length it out. See if you can envision in your mind's eye the ball releasing down from the socket in your hip. Let that release now and that one will roll out. Again, readjust the block if it doesn't feel comfortable. Otherwise, see if you can really feel the opening in the front of the pelvis there. Very guarded area. You're in a safe place, see if you can find the opening. Let's take our hands to the bikini bones, these bones on the front of the pelvis here. Dig your fingertips inside those bikini bones and then pull them apart. As you pull the bikini bones apart, the sacroiliac joints in the back gather. Should feel really good, just a closure of those SI, sacroiliac joints in the back. Take your fingers down and walk them up your belly. So you're about two inches outside your belly button. Walk them up to the bottom of the rib cage. You'll find your diaphragm. Dig your fingers in underneath the ribs. That's where the diaphragm hides out. Move your fingers to the periphery so you'll come to the outside lateral border of that rib cage and then dig them back in again. Come back to center. Walk the fingertips down past the belly button two inches outside of it, through the pelvic bowl, and then down onto the inside of the thigh. That's where this psoas muscle attaches. Beautiful. Take your arms up over your head now. You can see if you can lay them way back behind you. We know this is a wonderful position for finding our breath. The circumference of the rib cage is huge here. So pause for three or four breaths. Inhaling through the nose. 
Hold the breath for a second. Exhale through the mouth, through pursed lips. Inhale again through the nose. And on the exhale, try to make the exhalation twice as long as the inhalation. We're here in a passive back bend, extending our spines, opening the front of the pelvis and our hip flexor complex. Bring your hands back to your side one at a time. Bend your knees, put your feet on the floor, readjust the block if necessary. Take your hand around the front of the right knee and draw the knee to the chest. So notice, without any instruction, if I tell you to draw your knee to your chest, what happens to the low back? It flexes, right? You end up rounding out the low back. So inhale, and on the exhale, let the knee free up and the hip free up as you put your sacrum back down onto the block. Feel what you're doing. You're anteriorly tilting the pelvis and putting your sacrum down. So you lose some of the hip flexion, but your back is in a beautiful position. Circle your ankle clockwise and counterclockwise. Maybe your ankle's as snappy as mine. Try to get some of the snap out. Bring the foot back to rest and spread the toes. Find the intrinsic muscles of the feet that work your toes. Release the foot and take your hands behind your knee now. So remember, yogis, don't just bring the knee up to the chest and start to round the back. Keep the sacrum pressed and bring the knee closer in. Let's open our hamstrings now. Inhale. On your exhale, keep your hands behind your knee. Straighten out the right leg. Pull the toes towards the face. So you'll lose some of the flexion in your hip again in order to find the stretch to your hamstring. Keep the sacrum imprinted. Take the toes of the right foot to the sky and then pull them back towards your face. So see if you can work the ankle as well as all the muscles that cross over the ankle and some go right to the knee. Bring the foot back to rest, inhale. Exhale, draw the knee down now, bringing the thigh closer towards the rib cage. Inhale, exhale, release it again. Maybe second round, you can feel it's freed up a bit. Do the thing with the foot, dorsiflex and plantar flex. Toes come back to face, inhale on your exhale, draw it in. So draw that right thigh in close to the belly chest, keep the sacrum imprinted. Use your hands to slide the right thigh over towards the right. It's called a lateral glide. We're just clearing the thigh from the rib cage. Look at your foot and take the sole of your foot and stand it on the sky. So you're in half a sky squat or half a happy baby. If you can reach up and grab the outside border of your foot with your fingertips without degradating the pose, then do so. If not, keep your hands behind your knee or put a strap over the bottom of your foot. So keep the sole of the right foot to the sky, keep the sacrum imprinted on your block and all that work for stretching out the left leg now, there's the stretch. That's the left psoas that we're looking to stretch. Your heel needs to be on the ground, it can't be up. Your heel rests on the earth to get the stretch of the tissue. Take your left arm up over your head, reach back. See if you can find that whole side body opening while you're still holding your right leg in place. It's the top of the left thigh that we're trying to release, soften in on that muscle. Bring the left hand back to your side, bend the left knee, put your foot on the earth, and push your right foot down. We should probably do the other side. If you're listening closely to what your body is saying, do the other side. Take your hands front of the left knee. Go ahead and flex the back as you bring the knee up and then imprint the sacrum, lose a bit of the hip flexion for the sacral imprint and that beautiful position for your low back. Pick your head up too, and then put it back down. Don't push the back of the head into the earth. Circle your ankle clockwise and counterclockwise. Maybe that one's not quite as snappy. Foot comes back to rest, spread the toes. Find the strength of the intrinsics. Release the toes, take the hand behind the knee, draw the knee up towards the chest. Don't let the low back round. Let's get our hammies going, inhale. Exhale, straighten out the left leg. You'll lose some of the hip flexion. Hands stay behind the leg, pull the toes towards the face and then take them to the sky, towards the face, to the sky. 
Bring them back to rest, draw the leg back in again. Maybe the thigh will touch the rib cage. Inhale, and on the exhale, release it. Last time, straighten out the knee, pull the toes to the face, back and up a few times. Keep the toes pulled towards the face. Inhale, the left leg back towards the chest. Exhale, slide it to the left a little bit. We laterally glide the thigh, and then the sole of the left foot stands on the sky. If you can grab the outside border of that left foot without too much difficulty, do so. Otherwise, keep the hands behind, or like I said, throw a strap over the bottom of the foot. Straighten the right leg, there's the reward. Stretch it down the mat. Heel needs to be on the ground on the right leg. If it's not, maybe put another block underneath or bend your knee a bit more. Don't let it hover. Take your right arm up over your head. Half a happy baby. Stretch the arm back. Bring your right arm back to your side. Bend your right knee. Put your foot on the floor and left foot on the floor. Readjust block as necessary. Let's go into our candlestick legs. So push your sacrum down into the block, draw the knees up towards the chest a bit. Take your hands on the bottom of the block. Maybe you'll even interlace your fingers. Bridge, open the chest so the shoulder blades are on the mat and then straighten out your legs or your candlestick legs. Your sacrum rests on the block. It gives you inches for your hamstring. Take your toes up and down a few times, the synchronized swimmer feet, up and down. Keep the toes pulled towards the face now, inhale. On the exhale, pull up your egg, tack down your belly, and very slowly start to let your legs come apart. You might get a whole bunch of snapping and cracking in your hips here. Let the legs come apart, and look up at either your right foot or your left foot, or do both, do the right and then the left, turn your toes out and push your heels out the roof. Yeah, look at that. Inhale the legs back together again. Keep breathing. Inside ankle bones will touch, big toes will touch. Inhale and on the exhale, find your core. Let those legs come apart again, the V position. Turn the toes out, find that external rotation component and push your heels right through the roof. Inhale the legs back up to center. And on the exhale, soles of the feet go together and the heels drop down towards the groin. Don't let them drop to the bottom of the mat, but right down towards the groin. Inhale, exhale, push the soles of the feet together. They rise up that redwood tree, right? Pull the toes towards the face, heels out the roof. Last time, inhale, exhale, soles of the feet push, lower the heels down to the groin. Inhale and exhale, push them back up again, pull the toes towards the face, heels out the roof. Bend your right knee, put your foot on the ground, bend your left knee, foot on the ground. Press the feet into the ground, lift up, slide the block out from under. Soles of the feet together, do your Bodha Konasana legs for a moment, rocking side to side. Such good care we're taking of our bodies and our minds. Good, bring it back to rest. And let's get at those hamstrings. Grab your straps, yogis, you know this. This is our five-way belt stretch. Take the belt around the bottom of the right foot, keep the left one bent, straighten out your right leg. So everybody will be at a different hip angle. If your hamstrings are tight, your leg will be lower. If your hamstrings are free, it will be higher or somewhere in between. You got a strap in each hand. Keep your ankle stable. Don't let the ankle invert and evert side to side and take your strap and towel off the bottom of your foot. So feel the strap in contact with the flesh of your foot and the warmth that you generate the acupressure points in our feet. Bring the strap to rest now. It's on the metatarsal line where your toes meet your foot and pull down with the strap, the toes will come towards the face and push up with your foot. The right quadriceps will contract and the hamstring gets the message to release. Here's a really great cue here. That sacrum again, imprint it. Notice as you imprint the sacrum, maybe you can feel more stretch in your hamstring because your pelvis is in a beautiful position. 
What I'm trying to say here is you're not pulling that strap and flattening your back, but you're keeping the sacrum imprinted and pulling the strap. Your hands can be up like this or your elbows down on the ground, more like a hinge, whatever feels best for you. Straighten out your left leg now. We just did this, right? So this is the same thing we just did with our hip flexor sequence. Find that that leg is maybe more free now. Use the strap and see if you can find a little more hamstring stretch. Remember, this is not a war with your hamstrings. This is just encouragement. Feel the release as you put the energy and effort into the spot. In a moment, we'll let the right leg out to the right side to open up the inside hamstrings. So maybe put the strap in the right hand, both reins of it, inhale. And on your exhale, look at the toes of the right foot as your leg starts to lower out to the right. The toes will come to the top of the mat and the inside ankle bone to the sky. I suggest you hold the strap in the right hand and the left hand, especially if your limb is a bit heavier, and look what you can do. Start to bring your toes up towards the top of the mat and the inside ankle bone to the sky. Find the external rotation. Yeah, how about pausing there for a breath? Inhale the right leg back straight up to the sky. Switch the strap to the left hand. We're not going to roll over yet. We're going to stretch the forgotten hamstring on the right leg. Inhale. On the exhale, push your sacrum down again, yogis, and then take that right leg across town. Notice what the sacrum imprinted. It's all in your hip, and it's a big stretch on the right lateral thigh. That's that hamstring. Maybe the left elbow goes down on the ground. Push the foot to the strap. Pull the strap back to the foot and feel all that energy and softening in that hip, beautiful. Inhale the leg back up to straight leg raised position and now we'll roll it. Bend the left knee, put your foot on the earth. We're gonna bridge up just enough to clear the pelvis. Inhale, exhale, push the foot into the ground, lift the pelvis and roll over onto your left side. So you wanna be sure that your head is either on a prop or on the ground. The big toe of the right foot, use the strap and pull it up more. You stretch that hammy. Underneath leg, crawl it to the back of the mat. As it crawls back, don't contract your hamstring so uh, hard that you're going to get a cramp in it, but more like I'm going to easily bend my knee and grab your shin, your foot, or your toes. And if none of that works, don't grab any of it. And roll yourself onto your back with your shoulder blades. So we got all these contact points here. Left hand holding the strap, give it a little pull. Stretch your hamstring, right hammy. Right hand, mm, give that a little pull and stretch your left quad. How about pushing the left elbow into the earth, lift the heart and try to rotate through the rib cage, bring that around. Elbow presses down, left elbow, lift the heart and rotate. So look over the right shoulder if possible, pause here for a moment or three and use your smarts to release. You haven't gone so deep into it that you can't wait to get out of it. It's more like, oh, I can really explore this end range. If you're holding your underneath foot, release it. Straighten out the leg, roll back onto your back. Take the strap, one hand or both hands, with the right leg, imprint your sacrum and use the strap on every exhalation to stretch that right hamstring a bit more. If you can, straighten the knee and you'll get even more of a stretch of those strings. Close your eyes, get into the rhythm of your breath for three long breaths. left knee, bend the right knee, take the strap off the bottom of the foot, lie down next to your body on the left, straighten out both legs, 
Take a moment here, the sensations right versus left. Listen to the calling. Lefty is saying, hey, don't forget me. Bend your knees and take a strap around the bottom of the left foot. Maybe this is a great time to envision yourself doing this on your own. What a thought. The strap hanging around a doorknob somewhere, just bugging you during the day to say, hey, stop and do it up. Take your strap, towel off the bottom of your foot. Find that warmth, that plantar aspect of your foot. Have it come to rest again. Strap is on the metatarsals. Pull the strap down, push the foot up. Left quad will contract, handy will soften. Don't forget about imprinting the sacrum. So find that anterior tilt of the pelvis, the sacrum will imprint and you'll feel your string stretch that much more. Keep the leg where it is and straighten out the right leg now. Down the mat it goes and as righty goes down, see if you can take lefty up a little bit more. Think about what's happening up at the hip, right? We're not just hauling this whole left leg up, but it's the movement in the hip joint, the arthrokinematics, the movement of the ball in the socket that allows for that hamstring to stretch. Nice work, yogis. Take the strap in your left hand. Inhale it on your exhale. Look at the left leg as it releases out to the left side. The toes are to the top of your mat, the inside ankle bone to the sky. See if you can roll the little toe towards the floor a bit more and get that external rotation. You got it. Maybe strap in both hands, left and right, to steer the ship. Imprint your sacrum, the right butt cheek will stay down, and maybe even look over the right shoulder for a moment and feel that opening. Inhale your gaze back up to the sky. On the exhale, bring that left leg back up to straight leg raise position. Switch it to the right hand, the belt. And right elbow might go on the ground and take that left leg cross town 45 degrees. Don't let the left butt cheek come up. The sit or the sacrum stays down. Just a little bit of the cheek comes up. Yeah. And use the strap to find that forgotten hamstring lateral left leg. Inhale the leg back up to straight leg raise position. Let's roll it, bend the right knee, inhale. Exhale, push down into the right foot, bridge up a little bit, roll over onto your right side. Look at the big toe of your left foot, boom, on the ground it goes. Use the strap in your right hand to find the hamstring stretch of the left leg. Underneath leg, crawl it to the back of the mat. You'll bend your knee, grab your toes, your in step or maybe your shin and roll that left shoulder towards the ground the blades low back stays perpendicular make your adjustments here use the strap in the right hand to stretch your hammy your left hand to stretch your quad maybe bend the right elbow fingertips to the sky press the right elbow into the earth and roll rotate the up Help to get some more rotation in that thoracic spine. Maybe you can get your shoulder blade down and turn your gaze, look over the left shoulder. Don't get all bound up here. Come into what you can tolerate and still find your breath and be able to talk while you're doing it. Otherwise, you've gone too deep. Beautiful, release that under leg, underneath leg if you're holding it. Go back onto your back, so yummy. Take the strap, one in each hand. Find that straight leg raise, left hamstring. Three long, slow, deep, intentional breaths. With every exhalation, feeling the lengthening to your strings. Bend your right knee, bend your left, take the strap off, straighten out both legs. Feel what's happened to our bodies. Roll over onto your right side and push back up to seated place. Sitting pretty. 
Right foot, left thigh. Left foot can be straight out or underneath you if you've got the plantar flexion. Many of you will find yourself seated with your left butt cheek rolled up. It's because the internal rotation isn't quite there. Take a blanket and don't put it underneath the left butt, but underneath the right. So your left cheek will be off the ground, but you'll be sitting pretty, you'll be level. Take your hands back behind you, big open heart. Try to keep the headlights forward. Let's open the left hip flexors. Inhale. On your exhale, push the left hip forward. So you'll feel that iliacus muscle, especially from the inner bowl of the pelvis down to the thigh. On the way back down with that left sit bone, internally rotate the left thigh. So on the way back, you're not letting it roll out. It's coming in. Let's do that a few times. Open the front. Mm, release the sit bone. Open the front. Release the sit bone. Pause for a moment here. Big open heart. Take your left leg around the right leg with as little hands as possible. Get yourself into your seated twist. Big toe knuckle, right foot, left foot on the ground. Fist press the earth, lift, and put your buns back down. Hand on the knee, big open heart. Inhale the arms up. On the exhale, keep the gaze over the knee as you open up to the right. So just turn the rib cage. Use the muscles to find it. Come through the heart and then let the head release. We started with all this, right? Look back at the little finger of your right hand. Inhale back through center and on the exhale, keep the gaze forward and twist left. Turn the gaze, look over little finger, left hand. Inhale back through center, do exactly the same thing. Take it around, turn the gaze and this time release the arms. The left elbow will be inside that Left knee and use the right hand to promote a little bit more rotation as you look over the right shoulder. Inhale back through center. Exhale, do your twist. And then release the arms and use that for your opening. Inhale back through center. Take your leg back where you found it. Let's add our uh, hinge now. Take your right knee up and down. See if you can open that. Do the same with the left now. Open and close. See if you can feel that articulation in the joints. Beautiful. Lean back. Inhale. On the exhale, straighten out the left leg. We just warmed your hamstrings up and take it around. See if you can get your left knee over your right and bring it back into place and snuggle it back in again, sitting pretty. Three of those. Inhale, exhale, lean back and take it around. Hamstrings all stretched out and getting a nice strengthening of our hip muscles. Last time, yogis, take it forward and around <coughs> and back into our sitting pretty. Good, let's move into beast pose now. Take your hands to the bottom of your rib cage. Inhale. On the exhale, turn the ribs and look over to the right. Reach out with your hands. Staggered sphinx arms. Right is forward, left elbow touches right knee. Press the hands and elbows into the ground and lengthen forward. Remember, we're not coming down in a rounded back. We're going to come down really long. So very long spine. And then take your left hand out and do the same thing. Press the hands into the ground and lengthen out. If your underneath leg is pinchy, your hip, then maybe slide the knee forward a little bit to decrease the pinch. Okay, yogis, here we go. Inhale, and on your exhale, rotate your rib cage. So look over to the right, and your belly button will address towards the ground. There we go. And then lay it down. Put your beast down. Maybe right down to the earth. Maybe some props. Maybe your forehead on your forearms. Straighten your left leg now, yummy, yummy, long leg, Tadasana, and then take it back behind you. Mm -hmm. Huge hip flexor opening, very safe for our back and this beautiful rotary component, trying to bring the heart towards the earth. Gather your limb back in again, bring yourself back up to seated place into gate pose, modified gate, right arm comes out, elbow comes down. 
Left thumb into the armpit. This is another lengthener. Inhale. On the exhale, lengthen out the spine. Roll the ribs towards the sky. Look up. Inhale the left hand up. And take it across. Reach way out. The line from your left hip at your fingertips has never been longer. And let the right ear release towards the right shoulder. Let's inhale up, use the hand as little as possible, and exhale over. Remember our Saramante arms, bring them around, the car dealer, down they go. Elbow on the ground, on your leg or on your hip, on a prop, and try not to address the heart to the ground, but we're spinning open. This is rusty gate for lots of folks. Inhale back up, and to the other side. Inhale back up, and left. Oof, yummy. Hands back. Let's switch the legs around now and use your hands as little as you have to. So what does that mean? Maybe you can even take your thumbs in your armpits or cross your arms like this and lean back and see if you might be able to bring your legs around just by using your core. If not, put your hands down and make it happen. There's no end to the fun we can have in our practice. Take your right foot straight back or out. Hands back, inhale, exhale, right hip comes forward. On the way down, it internally rotates. All these pieces, right, that we're finding the lost motion two or three times. Come back to sitting pretty. We'll take the right leg around the left again. Use the arms as little as you have to, as much as you need to. See if you might be able to get that leg around. Big toe, right foot on the ground. Maybe take your fists and release. Hand to the knee, big open heart. Inhale the arms up. On the exhale, nose stays over knee. Make a left hand turn, open twist. Turn the gaze, look at the little finger of the left hand. Inhale back through center. Exhale, nose stays over knee to start. Twist. And then look to the little finger right. Inhale back to center. Exhale, twist. Release the arms. Now use them to help to inspire that slinky twist. Inhale back. Exhale right. Release the arms. Use those as your twist. Mm. Inhale back to center. Arms as much as you need to, as little as you have to. Put the legs back, left foot, right thigh, maybe foot straight back, or even turn out is maybe a little better. Let's do the left leg. Go ahead and crank it up and down a few times. Bring it back and then do the right leg. This is a beauty. Really great mobilization in the hip. We'll add our strengthening now, lean back a little bit, pull up the core, inhale, exhale, sweep it around the right knee, maybe over the left, bring it back and seat it back in place. Three of those, inhale, exhale, sweep it around and back. Inhale, exhale, sweep it around, oh yeah, and back. Let's do our beast now. Bottom of the rib cage, turn to the left. Put your arms down, staggered sphinx arms, right elbow, left knee, inhale, exhale. Use the push of the hands and elbows to lengthen out the spine. Walk the right fingers forward so you've got sphinx arms now. Press hands and elbows into the earth and lengthen out. Remember, before you lay it down, twist, right? So twist to the left a bit. Try to get your heart towards the ground. And then go ahead and do your pillow arms or no arms and put your forehead down onto the ground. And straighten out your right leg. That's the yumminess. Straighten it out. Sole the foot to the bottom of the mat and then back to the back of the mat it goes. The entire hip flexor complex getting a beautiful stretch. Draw the limbs back in again. Come back to your sitting pretty position. And let's move into gait. Left hand out. Find the stability in your shoulder. Thumb into the armpit. Lengthen. Rotate. Inhale up. Exhale over. 
Saravante arms, inhale up, and exhale over opposite side. Back over. Last time. And back to center. Glorious. On your backs, yogis. Stretch out your legs. Take your arms up over your head. Take a breath here. All that work and attention to the details. Reap the benefits. Take your arms to your side now. Grab your mat with your fists. Inhale. And on the exhale, push your hands towards your feet and your body will slink up the mat an inch or so right into Shavasana. Cover your eyes or close your eyes. Maybe put a blanket over you if you feel a bit cold. And allow yourselves to descend into Shavasana, our productive rest, our lucid sleep. It's a reboot, yogis. Feel the earth swaddling you and holding you. Maybe touch the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth behind your teeth. It's a still calming point. Let the tongue release to the bottom of the mouth now. No tongue and no teeth, no gripping, no grinding. Soft, vacuous mouth. That softness is relayed through the rest of the body as you float off on your magic yoga mat, your magic carpet ride. Go out for a minute or two and explore that unknown, unbridled and soft and floaty. Off you go. Maybe before you come out of your Shavasana, we realize how all-encompassing our practice is, touching on almost everything, challenging us, finding our breath, finding our release, finding our community, finding our stability, our mobility. It's all in there. How we can restore ourselves to homeostasis or even balance those scales being balanced out in all of our physiology and our nervous system. Find the marble on the back of your skull. It's the center of the skull. Let your head start to rock very slowly side to side. You might want to begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes, bringing your physical bodies back around. And when you're ready, Bend your knees, slide the heels towards the buns, glue your knees and ankles together and roll on your right side away from your heart into your transition position. Perhaps you notice as you roll onto your side, thoughts of generosity, of kindness, of altruism, of seva, our selfless service. Find yourself on your side, all tranquil and Relaxed, we remember Loka Samasta, Sukino Bhavantu, 
May all beings everywhere be happy and free. May the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to that happiness and to that freedom for all. What a way to live. Inhale and on your exhale, bring yourself back up so slowly back to the seated position. Feel the sit bones rooting to the earth, the crown of the head up to the sky. And touch your fingertips down. Feel those energetic finger prongs connecting us. Here we are sitting on this beautiful blue-green planet, the tiniest grain of sand, and yet so important to the whole. Inhale. On your exhale, draw your hands up to your heart center, thumbs to the heart, and the heart will rise. We pause here to remind ourselves to be so grateful for all that we have. Inhale. Exhale, let the hands float forward, fingertips touch, fingernails touch, hands open like a lotus. From around the world, bring all the sweetness into your hearts. Backs of the hands roll, thumbs to heart, thumbs to the third eye. Still contemplation point, all seeing eye, ESPI, our clarity spot. Let's bow to our friends. Namaste. Thank you, beautiful yogis. Always a beautiful time to spend with you here on Sundays. I have starting tomorrow the take the afternoon off again. It's now called Oasis Offerings. It's all on Yoga Works, Yoga Trees website or mine. If you'd like to join me, it's 1215 to 315 California time. Great to see you. I'm going to hang out for a little bit as I love to do and chat with you guys, see what you got to say. If not, have yourself a beautiful rest of the day. 